In today's video, Tati Westbrook does not send Jeffree Star a PR package, and Jeffree Star gives us an update regarding the fibers found in some of his eyeshadow palettes. Those stories, coming up now. Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I hope you're having a fantastic day today. If you're a return subscriber, I really do appreciate your continued support. If you're new here and you enjoyed these types of videos, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Everyone give this video a big thumbs up, click on that notification bell and select it to all. That way you'll be notified when I upload my next video. Before we get started, and as always, I do need to remind you guys that I am a drama commentary channel. I have opinions and I speak them freely. Opinions are not facts, they never have been facts, and they never will be facts. Now that I've gotten that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive in. Over the weekend, Jeffree Star reviewed Jaclyn Hill's new highlighter collection. He discussed her last launch disaster and how she deserves a second chance after handling the first one so poorly. What I found interesting other than him liking the products for the most part is that he very briefly discussed Tati Westbrook. Tati, as most of you know, very recently launched Tati Beauty. Her first launch included a very stunning eyeshadow palette and it is currently sold out. Jeffrey mentioned in his Jaclyn Cosmetics review video that a lot of people were asking him why he never reviewed Tati's palette since they had been friends for so long. The answer was pretty simple. The reason he didn't review her palette was because she never sent it to him, and since it's currently sold out, he's going to have to wait for a restock so he can purchase it. Jeffrey didn't go into the details or speculate as to why she didn't send the palette to him, but he did congratulate her on a very successful launch. And as to be expected, once Jeffrey revealed that Tati didn't send him the palette, people began talking about it, well, because it's T. A fan of Jeffrey wrote, Hearing that Tati didn't have him on PR, T. Someone else wrote, so Tati put out an excusatory video that she knew would get attention, JS agreed, and then she took him off PR lists? This fan tweeted, I'm more shocked that Tati didn't send Jeffrey her palette, but Tati was sent JSC stuff previously. A supporter asked, did anyone else wonder why Jeffrey isn't on Tati's PR list? Like, if there isn't any drama and they're still friends. I don't know, I genuinely love them both and know they are killing it in the beauty game for sure. It is just curious is all. And then finally, someone else tweeted, not on Tati's PR list? Huh? Someone else tweeted this very good point. They said Jeffrey sent her jawbreaker, but Tati only sent PR mainly to smaller influencers, people with 5 million or less. So maybe Tati wasn't being shady towards Jeffrey after all. So it could very well be that Tati only wanted to focus on smaller influencers, which is great. Quite a few people were shocked that Tati did not send him the palette, but I gotta say, I wasn't shocked in the least. Ever since Dramageddon 2 came to an abrupt end, Jeffrey and Tati seemed to be putting some distance between them. Tati removed the Jeffree Star lipstick holder from the background of her videos, they unfollowed each other on social media for the most part, and Tati never reviewed the conspiracy collection like she has his past several launches. Given what's transpired, I'm not at all surprised that Jeffrey didn't receive the PR package. It's clear that at least publicly, they are no longer as close as they used to be. Could they still be friends privately? Of course, but we just don't know. Was Jeffrey being a little shady to Tati by even mentioning it? I don't think so. People were curious and he just responded. I rather doubt that we'll ever know what happened between the two of them. Shane Dawson's series finale did address the drama, but it was exceedingly short and offered no new information. Essentially, everything got out of hand and everyone involved seemed to have regretted letting it get as far as it did. It does make you wonder though, did Tati distance herself from Jeffree Star because he encouraged her to confront James Charles, or was it just best for everyone involved to stay clear of each other to avoid future issues? No matter what actually happened, I hope that one day they can all be friends again. And now let's move on to the update that Jeffree Star put out a few days ago regarding the fibers found within some of the palettes from the Conspiracy Collection. In my last video, I discussed there being a few reports of issues with fibers being found embedded within a few of the palettes. Customers pulled out several long hair-like fibers and were rightfully concerned about the discovery. I'll be sure to post a link of my previous video down below if you'd like to see a clip of a customer pulling out several fibers. At the time I filmed my video, Jeffree hadn't publicly addressed the issue, but the following day, he did. According to Jeffrey, the fibers that were found within a few of the palettes are from the ribbon they place on top of the eyeshadows during the pressing process. Jeffrey stated that if the ribbons aren't changed often enough, they can start to fray and some can get embedded within the eyeshadows. Here is his full Snapchat statement for those who may have missed it. Good morning, good morning everybody. Hello, how are ya? Alright, so I want to come on here a little bit. I want to talk about something that has been going around on the internet, um, on Twitter. There is a post where there is a girl that shows pulling out a fiber from her mini controversy palette. Um, 
it is all over Twitter and a lot of you are asking for information. What the hell is it? Now, over the last few days, I have been investigating these claims with my lab and I have a full answer and I am excited to share it with you guys so everyone can see what exactly happened. Now, full transparency, we made over 1.1 million eyeshadow palettes. My customer service team has received only 35 emails um, with an issue, so I just wanna be fully transparent with you guys always. 35 palettes out of 1.1 million have had issues. That is 0.000%. I pride myself on my... Now you guys know I really pride myself on my customer service. Jeffree Star Cosmetics has been in business for over five years now. And I always like to come directly to you guys to the source and explain everything because a lot of people are trying to call me, like they're trying to come for me and Shane on a real level. Like, are you like, are you guys going to address this? You guys, I heard about this a week ago. I'm fully investigating everything. And a lot of people are trying to put this next to the Jaclyn Hill lipstick launch. You guys, stop. I address everything fully. I'm not blocking anyone. I'm not deleting my social media account. Um, and that's no shade, but that's not how I handle things. I am always fully transparent. So um, to compare my situation to someone else's just is not fair. So the 35 people that have had issues with their palettes, a few people have tweeted them. Of course, you guys, it looks disgusting. Full tea, like girl, I, my, like my lab needed to explain themselves. So I want to show you guys a clip of what happens when we press the eyeshadow palettes. There is a ribbon in between the... So when they are pressing the eyeshadows um, with all the pans, they put a piece of ribbon and material in between the metal and the eyeshadows, and they are pressing it in between. Now, I do have a full statement from my lab that I'm going to share in a second, and I would love to share the clip of a video of them pressing one of the shades. Um, let's roll it. So as you guys can see from the video, that piece of fabric, now if that is not changed out enough, sometimes there will be a little fraying. And sadly, 35 people did get a little piece of fabric in their eyeshadows. Now, it's not toxic, it's completely safe, but it's still disgusting and does not represent my brand. So anyone that has had that issue, please of course email customer care. And anyone that already has, full refund, brand new palette, it's just that easy. Um, now my last did send me a full thing of the exact explanation and what they're going to do in the future to make sure that never happens again. Let me put that up. All right, so quickly, I just want to say thank you to everyone that brought this issue to my attention. I was shook when I saw it. So now that I have a full explanation from my lab, I feel a lot better and at peace. But of course, the internet does spread false information, and I just wanted to be fully like clear that that is what's going on. Um, people will, of course, run with stories, say whatever they're going to say. So I like to nip things in the butt early and just deal with it. So, of course, if you guys have any more questions or concerns, or if there's anything wrong with the product, always email customer care. I have a full team and a full staff that is there to help Monday to Friday. Um, now, of course... 99.99999% of you have a great product. Everything is amazing. So if uh, you don't care about this, skip forward. But thank you guys for listening always. And um, I will talk to you shortly. For those that don't have Snapchat, Jeffree Star also took to Twitter. He said, Hey everyone, it's come to our attention that a few dozen people out of 1.1 million pallets produced have a few ribbon fibers embedded in their products. The lab has done a full investigation and we found the issue. I pride myself on quality and fully apologize for this error. Keeping it 100. Here is a clip from the lab of how we press the eyeshadows. Moving forward, my manufacturer will make sure this never happens again and have put in place several precautions and steps to avoid the ribbon issue. You all know how serious I take my company. Thank you for listening.
Anyone that has any product issues with any JSC product, my customer service team is available Monday to Friday. Pallets that were affected, we have sent out new ones and also given a full refund because that does not reflect how my brand should be represented. Jeffrey then also posted the official statement from the manufacturing company. The statement reads, Dear Jeffree Star and team, regarding pressing ribbon fibers found in pressed powder. We concluded our investigation. The source of the fibers are from the cut ribbon sheets that were pressed into the product. We have implemented multiple controls along the process to mitigate this and prevent it from happening in the future. 1. Conduct an awareness meeting with all employees regarding the seriousness of this issue. 2. Eliminate the use of scissor cut ribbon for all pressed powders. 3. Add black light to our inspection protocol to see fibers not visible with the naked eye. 4. Discussed with our Italian ribbon sources if they can seal the edges of their ribbon. The process by which cosmetic powders are made into their final products requires the use of pressing ribbon that is placed between the product and the metal pressing tools. This ribbon not only allows the tool to press the powders into the pans, but also has a great impact on the texture and performance of the products. Each shade contains different types of amounts of pigments, shimmers, and pearls in the formulas, which impacts how the ribbon and product interact and thus the look and performance of the products. By using various combinations of ribbon materials, we can achieve the desired texture and finish on all of the shades and formulas. Pressing ribbons are made of 100% cotton, nylon, or synthetic polyester fibers that are smooth, soft, inert, non-toxic, lightweight, with high resilience. For this palette, we use multiple combinations of these pressing ribbons to achieve the beauty and performance of the product. Some of these ribbons come in sheet form, while others are cut with scissors to fit specific needs. Please know we are taking immediate measures to prevent this issue. Kind regards. Jeffrey may have addressed the fibers, but he didn't talk about the bumpy lip balms. A customer that received such a lip balm reached out to Jeffrey's customer service team, and they got the following response. Sometimes in the bulk process of heating, mixing, and pouring, the wax can tend to cool quicker than the other ingredients. This can cause wax buildup which can create those harder bumps that you are seeing in the formula. I can assure you there is no defect of the product and it's safe to use. Unfortunately, the Diet Shane Lip Balm is completely out of stock at this time. I went ahead and processed a refund for the item. Please allow up to three business days for the money to return to your bank account. We apologize for the inconvenience and thank you for supporting Jeffree Star Cosmetics. The customer also posted this tweet, update, the refund has also been processed already, same day. And then they went ahead and posted these two screenshots showing that their refund had indeed been processed. And now it's time for my two cents. I'm glad that Jeffrey addressed the situation even though he was still in Bora Bora. He got the information he needed and addressed it with his customers. He didn't pass the blame onto anyone and took full responsibility, showed us the process and what's going to be done in the future to keep it from happening again. From what I've seen, the majority of the feedback to his statement has been positive. Customers feel that he addressed the issue in a relatively timely manner and offered enough information to back his claims. There have been, of course, a few that were a little less thrilled about his statement. To me, though, they didn't seem to be upset about how he handled it, but more so upset that Jeffrey got praised for his statement while Jacqueline Hill got dragged for hers. Now this is completely my opinion, but I don't honestly think it's fair to compare the situations. The only thing that is similar is that both had issues with their products. Jacqueline Hill's issues, from what we've seen, were far more widespread with many, many more issues. Her lipsticks had fibers, alleged hair, metal shards, hard balls, one batch code, smelled, and allegedly caused reactions or cuts to some customers. Jacqueline's first response was to blame the customer and then to make an apology video before disappearing for months while some customers still have no refund to this day. Jeffrey, on the other hand, took care of it in a week's time. No blaming, no disappearing, it was quick and it was professional and it was done. If Jeffrey would have never addressed it publicly, I would have been annoyed and I would have called him out on it, and I actually sort of did in my last video. I do wish that he would have discussed the lumps found on the lip balms a bit more. If more cases pop up and it still isn't addressed by him, then that's a problem and I will be sure to call him out on it. I also would have liked to have seen him address the broken palettes from Beauty Bay more, because it was a big issue for a lot of customers, and to this day, Beauty Bay has still not publicly addressed the situation. Now, I understand that Beauty Bay is not his company, but they're his products. I would have liked to have heard Jeffrey discuss that a little bit more, other than just his tweet to Spill Sesh. Well, what do you guys think? Do you guys think that Tati was being shaded by Jeffrey Star? Do you think that Jeffrey handled the situation properly? Let me know in the comments down below. 
All right, everyone, that's going to do it for today's video. Again, I'd like to thank you so, so much for spending some time with me today. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Remember, if you are new here and you enjoy these types of videos, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Everyone give this video a big thumbs up, and I will see you very shortly on the next one. Bye! Thank you.